This is Mark Burra, and I'm going to show you how to save an STL file for 3D printing. So a friend of mine uh, came over the house this weekend, and he has a, a foldable lawn chair, and uh, one of the pieces for holding legs had broken off, and you know, this is kind of what you see modeled here. Essentially, this this tab uh, is it's a piece of plastic; it had broken off. The other side of the tab was still there, but but it couldn't uh, couldn't support the uh, the chair anymore. Uh, so I, I quickly modeled up a uh, replacement part, and uh, what, what we wanted to do then was to uh, print it out uh, on a 3D printer and, and have a fix for the chair. Um, so once, once it's modeled, uh, it's really pretty simple. Uh, you go to the application button in Solid Edge and you do a, a, a save as. And there's a lot of different file formats here, but we're going to pick uh, STL. Now I can just hit save here, but I, I want to show you the options and, and maybe give you some hints uh, for people to sometimes hit different types of problems with STL files. Uh, first of all, STL is, a, is unitless. Uh, what that means is that if you save from Solid Edge with one set of units, uh, the, the program that's going to read that STL file has to use the same set of units. Uh, a lot of times you'll see people that, that you know, might say, hey, my STL model is too big or too small from what I saved it as. And that's because, um, you know, like I said, STL doesn't, um, doesn't know what units uh, are being used. And so you've got to make sure both programs uh, read and, and uh, uh, save and read the, this with the same units. Typically what I'll use is millimeters. Uh, you can also use inches. Uh, and, but millimeters you know, will typically work for most, uh, most programs. Uh, the other important thing to know about STL is that it's a faceted uh, model. It's not a precise model like you have in Solid Edge. So the, the precise model in Solid Edge has to be converted to this, this faceted model. And you have some options then on how that conversion takes place. Uh, one of the things you want to look at is conversion tolerance. So I have a very small number here, 0 0.01 millimeters. Uh, so that is you know, much more precise than what my 3D printer can do. Um, using higher higher numbers uh, creates a smaller STL file, but you know at a certain point you'll you'll get flats in the model. So if you have like a, a, a cylinder, it's going to end, end up looking kind of like a, a hexagon or a pentagon or something like that. So you want to use a, a, a you know, the right number that uh, uh, you know works with your 3D printer. I typically go with a small number. It creates a bigger file, uh, and, but it you know it takes maybe a little bit longer for the 3D printing software to slice it. But that's that's not really a big deal. Um, the other thing you can look at is surface plane angle. Uh, this is a little bit hard to explain, uh, but what this does is looks at the angle between the actual surface and the facets that are going to be created in the uh, in the STL file. So you can you know ch change this around a little bit too. Um, output file, you, you, STL supports two uh, types, binary and ASCII. Um, almost every program I know will read both. I did hit one or two that will hit, uh, will only use ASCII, so I typically leave it on ASCII. Uh, maybe a little bit bigger file, but it's again, it's not too big of a deal. And if you have questions about these different options, you can always hit the help button. Uh, which will pop up, uh, you know, a little more uh, detail on you know, what these things do. Okay. So now we'll hit uh, OK, and I can go in here and I can, you know, hit Save. Uh, I did this a little while ago, so I'm going to overwrite my old file, and, and we're good to go. So I do want to show you a couple other things here while we're talking about 3D printing. Um, if you, you notice here my my uh, my axes here for the the X Y and Z, uh, most 3D printers uh, by default will line up with the X and Y plane uh, of Solid Edge, uh, which means that as you as you print something, uh, you know it prints up in layers. So it would actually start with this bottom face here and then build up in the model. Uh, and, and increase in layers. It's not a big deal. Every, every software will let you reorient it, but you know, if you want to just have it pop in and be set up the, the, the right way to begin with, that's that's nice to have. Uh, another thing that I did, uh, did made a, a little change in the design here. Uh, this cylinder used to come up to a a, a, a horizontal plane, uh, which you can see right now is not a horizontal plane. Three D printers, some uh, the higher end ones will print supports, uh, which will allow to support that that that, that flat plane. Um, you, can, you can 
picture it, the, the nozzle's going around and it, it, that there wasn't a support there, the, the plastic would just drop to the, uh, the print bed. Um, in, in my case, uh, my, I have a, you know, a lower end consumer level 3D printer, so uh, I, I know the supports are a little harder to do. Now my printer can, and most, most printers can expand out uh, into a larger model. Uh, and typically you don't want to do more than about say 45 degrees so what I did is I put a uh, 45 degree chamfer uh, on on this place it used to be flat just to modify the model a little bit better so I could actually print it uh, in, in this way that's really all there is to it uh, like I said um, it, it is not too hard to output an STL file if you if you know uh, a little bit about the format um, if you uh, have other questions uh, please come visit me at the uh, the salt edge forum there's there's more information there i'll try to do a little blog post about this show you the actual design that we have uh, and i look forward to uh, seeing you there